Good morning, Sister Lee. Good morning. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Deacon Kinney. Good morning, Deaconess Laverne. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Elder Lorraine. Good morning, Edna. Good morning. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Nelson. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Wendy. Amen. And also, good morning to everyone that's on Facebook as well. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Good morning, Sister Brenda. Good morning, Deacon Ken. Good morning, Minister Denise. Good morning, Trisha and Terry and Jessica. Good morning as well. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. Amen. Good morning to each and every one of you. Thank you for joining with me this morning. Amen. Let's gather our hearts and minds together as we pray to our Father. Amen. And so if you're in a noisy area on the conference line, please uh, mute your phones so that it'll minimize background distractions. Amen. And let's begin to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you thanking you for this day. God, we thank you for this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for life, health, and strength, and for all that you have done to bless us, Lord God, and watch over us, and protected us from dangers seen and unseen. God, you watched over our souls. God, you blessed us. You've carried us. You comforted us, Lord God. You provided for us. God, you have done everything that we need, for you said that you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, our provider. And you promised to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And we know that your riches are inexhaustible. They are never ending. They're always full and ready to supply. And so, Father, we come before you in Jesus' name, recognizing that you are God and there is nobody like you. There is none that can be compared to you, for you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. You are he who was and is and is to come, the Almighty. And so, God, we thank you this morning. We give you glory, honor, and praise for everyone that's on the conference line and those that are on Facebook Live, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for each home and each church that is represented this morning. For God, you said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, you said you would hear from heaven, you would forgive us of our sins, and you would heal our land. And so, Father, you know what we need of before we even ask you. Father, for you said you know our uprising and our downsitting, that you are acquainted with all of our ways, and there is nothing that surpasses your understanding, for you are the omniscient God. You are all-knowing God. You are wise beyond our comprehension, for you said your thoughts are not our thoughts, and your ways are not our ways. And so high as the heavens are from the earth, so far and vastly different are your ways from ours. And so, God, we come before you in Jesus' name, thanking you, Lord God, for all that you have done, thanking you, Lord God, for life, health, and strength, thanking you, Lord God, for this privilege that we have to pray, for you told us to pray without ceasing, and you told us that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous one avails much. And so, God, we extend ourselves towards you, for you told us to cast all of our cares upon you, for you care for us. And so we thank you for your great love. We thank you for your great mercy. We thank you for your great grace and your tender compassion 
compassions, how, Lord God, you know that we are dust and you are compassionate towards us, Father. You love us with an everlasting love. And God, we can present anything, both small and great to you, for you are well able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And so, God, we lift firstly ourselves to you, asking you, Holy Spirit of the living God, that you would search our hearts and minds. And if there be any wicked way within us, Lord God, forgive us, cleanse us and wash us of all iniquity, transgression and sins. Lord God, that you would purge us, Lord God, as David said, um, purge us with hyssop and wash us and we shall be whiter than snow and you can create in us a clean heart and you can renew in us a right spirit. So Father, help us for you said only those with clean hands and pure hearts shall ascend in your presence. And so Father, we wanna be clean in your presence. We don't wanna be filthy. We don't wanna be dirty, Lord God. So forgive us for every idle word spoken for every meditation of our hearts, Lord God, for every thought, idea, philosophy, psychology, or fantasy, or meditation, Lord God, that has been in opposition to your truth and to your word, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would cleanse us as your people, for we are your people. We are the sheep of your pasture, Lord God. We are your beloved, Father, and we pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you would thoroughly cleanse our hearts, minds, and spirits, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, let there be no spot or wrinkle. Let there be nothing, no form of variance, Lord God. Let there be no alloy or, or untruth in us, Lord God. But let us be real in your presence, Lord God. Let us be sanctified in your presence, Lord God. Let us, Lord God, be pure and walk uprightly in your presence in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, and we bless your holy name for you alone are worthy of all praise. You're worthy to receive glory, honor, and praise. God, you are worthy, oh God, for you are great and mighty, and you sit on the throne. It doesn't matter what's going on in the government. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. You are God and God alone, and beside you, there is none other. Father, for you rule and you reign supreme, Father. And you told us as you guide the rivers so you can also guide the hearts of the kings. For you said the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Everything belongs to you, Father. And we thank you for you are God. And so, Father, we present each and every one of us before you. Lord God, you know all of our cares and concerns. Father, you know all of our wishes and our hopes and our prayers. You know, God, Lord God, the troubles of our hearts and the things, the worries and the stresses and the anxieties. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would give us hope in you, that you would give us truth in you, that you would give us wisdom in you, that you would give us understanding by you. For you said in all your getting, get understanding. And so, Father, have your way in our lives. Bless each and every household represented this morning. I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that, Father, from the roof to the floor, to the basement, to the door, God, that you would rule in that household, Lord God, that you would destroy every work of confusion, that you would destroy, God, every attack of the enemy, God, and shield the family from the enemy, Lord God. For, Lord God, we desire salvation in our households. So we pray for our loved ones that are not saved, Lord God, that, Father, that somehow, some way, God, you would transform them, Lord God, and that you would save their souls, that you would deliver them from the power of Satan in the name of Jesus. Let there be no darkness in our homes, but let our homes be filled with light. God, for you told us to let our light so shine before men that they might see our good works and glorify you, Father, in heaven. 
So God bless them in the name of Jesus. Touch our children, Lord God. Speak to their minds. Don't allow them to be corrupted by this world. Don't allow them, God, to be deluded and deceived by the, the hand of the enemy, Lord God. But I pray in Jesus' name that in the hour of temptation, God, that they would run away, that they would run as Joseph ran and run away from that hour of temptation, Lord God. Don't allow them to be overwhelmed by peer pressure, Lord God. Don't allow them, Lord God, to be influenced by wicked friends. But God, I pray in Jesus' name that, Father, you would bless our children and that, Father, you would uh, encourage their hearts and then strengthen them, God. Father, we know in this world there's a spirit of suicide. There's a spirit of, of, of destruction that's in the world that's causing our children to even hate their own flesh through cuttings and through, Lord God, markings of their bodies, Lord God, and, and, and corrupting their lives with drugs and alcohol and, and, and sex and, and other things in this world, God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would help them to realize that they are blessed and highly favored, Lord God, that they are children of godly people, Lord God. I pray in Jesus' name that, Father, you would help our children, Lord God, to see you in all of your glory. For God, even Isaiah, when he saw you in all of your glory, he was able to see his own faults and to see his own need and to see, God, the needs of those around him. So God, purify our children. Forgive them of their sins. If they have sinned against you, God, forgive them, Lord God. Don't destroy them in their youth, Lord God. But Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would help them to come to know you in the spirit of truth, Lord God. Deliver them from every work of Satan in the name of Jesus. Every blindness, every deafness, Lord God. Dumbness, Lord God. Every shackle, every chain. Break it in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I pray for those children who didn't have fathers or mothers in their lives, Lord God, and that they grow up as bitter adults, Lord God. I pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, you would remove the bitterness, remove the anger, Father, even if it's called by parents, instilling that anger, Lord God. I pray in Jesus' name that you would smash to pieces every yoke of bondage in the name of Jesus that causes our children to hate their fathers or to hate their mothers, Lord God. In Jesus' name, for you told us to honor your parents in the Lord that your days might be long. And so, Father, forgive those parents who have passed on their hatred for their spouses and their hatred for their baby mothers and fathers onto their children. I pray God in Jesus' name that, Father, you would give us holy wisdom, the people of God, holy wisdom that we would speak according to truth and not according to error in the name of Jesus. Father, don't allow us to walk in darkness for you said you are in the light. So therefore we must walk in the light as you are in the light. So Father, in Jesus' name, bless your people, Lord God. Encourage our hearts, Lord God. We pray over every marriage that is represented on Facebook Live and those here on the conference line. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that, Father, that you would bless them, that you would bless them, God, and that, Lord, you would anoint that marriage, Father. I pray for the, firstly, Lord God, those marriages where the, the two don't agree, where one is saved and the other is not. Father, I pray for salvation over that unsaved spouse in the name of Jesus, that God, you would deliver them and call them out of darkness into your marvelous light. For you said, how can two walk together unless they agree? So God, help us in the name of Jesus, that our uh, marriages might be saved marriages, delivered marriages, holy marriages, righteous marriages, in the name of Jesus, for it represents the kingdom of our God. And so, Father, we thank you. But Lord, I also pray for the saved spouse, that you would give that woman and that man wisdom, that you would give them discipline in how they talk and discipline in how they act and react 
Lord God, and that, Father, that they would not use the word as a hammer over their spouse's head, but that, Father, that they would discipline their conversations, Lord God, that every that the words that they speak um, might be edifying to the hearer. Lord God, bless them in the name of Jesus. Don't allow them to cast condemnation or, or guilt on their loved ones, but I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that they would demonstrate um, the true servants of the living God who humbles themselves, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and let them see, let that unsaved spouse see, Lord God, their uh, devotion to you, their full, complete allegiance to you in the name of Jesus. Don't allow them, Father, in Jesus' name, to bring shame to your name. For you said, if the salt has lost its saltiness, where shall the earth be seasoned? So God, help us in the name of Jesus to represent you well. Lord God, we pray over every church, Lord God, that are the true churches of the living God, that Father, that there would be meat in your house, Lord God, and that your word would be rich and overflowing in the name of Jesus. For Father, we live in a dark world where the word is scarce today, and most are, are preaching according to itch, itching ears and preaching according to number say and trying to gain masses, Lord God, and fill pews. But God, in the name of Jesus, we need a word from you, God. If you don't speak, God, we won't hear a word. So God, speak unto our hearts in the name of Jesus and help us to understand your truth. For God, we should be able to uh, partake of the meat of your word, but many are only suited, Lord God, for the milk of your word, Lord God. And they've been subsisting on a diet of dairy, Lord God. And Father, because of that, their faith is weak. And in the hour of temptation, in the hour of testing and trials and persecution, they fall away for they have no substance. They have no root in themselves. So God, in Jesus' name, feed us with your holy word. Send us to teachers and preachers that will preach the solid, unadulterated word of God in the name of Jesus, in the whole gospel, not just one part, but the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. So bless us, Father, that we might walk uprightly before you, Lord God. Lead us and guide us this day, protecting us from dangers seen and unseen, Lord God, giving us hinds legs to leap over the traps and snares of the enemy and cause us, Father, to represent you well in this day, for this is the day that you have made. And Father, we thank you. We glorify you, Father, and we honor you, Lord God. I pray for those who are struggling in their finances. I pray firstly, Lord God, for wisdom, that you would give them holy wisdom in the name of Jesus, and that you would teach them how to be excellent managers of their finances. I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you would cause them not to spend too much, Lord God, but to utilize the monies that you have given them effectively, Lord God, for you will hold us accountable. Father, I pray that they would not rob you, for you said, will a man rob God? You said, yes. Yet we have robbed you from the tithes and the offering. So God, I pray that they would not be thieves, that they would not be corrupt in their dealings, but that Father, in Jesus' name, they would be honorable, remembering that everything that we do, we must do as unto the Lord. So God, bless us in the name of Jesus. Make a way out of no way. Break open the windows of heaven and pour them out of blessing, God, as they are obedient to your word. Bless them, God. Bless their households. Bless their children. Bless their marriages. Bless their jobs and their businesses, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. For you said, behold, how lovely on the mountains are the feet of them that brings good news. And so God, bless them in the name of Jesus as they do what they do for your glory. Give us all a spirit of excellence. Give us all a spirit of power, Lord God, and, and diligence in the name of Jesus. Don't allow us to fall flat in any way, shape, or form. But God, I pray in Jesus' name that having done all to stand, we would continue to stand in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless your people, God, and move amongst us, Holy Spirit of the 
the living God. Take full control of our minds and our wills and our hearts, Lord God, that you might be Lord of our lives. For you said, if I am your father, where is my honor? And if I am your Lord, where is my reverence? So God, help us to honor you and to reverence you in all that we say and do, God. For you alone are worthy of all of our praise. And so have your way this morning and be glorified in us that your name would not be brought to shame. Lord God, we thank you and we glorify you, Father. And if there's anything that we have failed to ask you of, Lord God, God. We pray, Lord God, that you, Lord God, would handle it according to your will, your perfect plan, and your way. We thank you for your word, and we bless you, God, for your word is truth. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. So bless us this morning, and we will give your name all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praises. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. We thank you, Father. You alone are worthy to be praised. Amen. Good morning to everyone. If I did not say good morning to you or you came on late, good morning to you. May the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. I wonder if you will turn with me in your Bibles just for a few moments um, to Acts chapter 12. And I have a few scriptures that I want to read to you, um, but uh, Acts chapter 12 is where we'll begin. Um, and when you get to Acts chapter 12, I want to read from verses uh, 21 down to verse 24. Amen. Acts chapter 12 from verse 21 to 24. And it reads, on a, on a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting the voice of a God and not of a man. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Amen. Amen. Listen, I just want to talk to you for a few moments today on be careful on the stage that you've been given. Be careful on the stage that you have been given. When you look in, in Psalms uh, chapter 75, Psalms chapter 75 and, and verses 6 and 7, you find these words that, that are so powerful for us to remember everywhere we go and, and in everything that we do. When you look there, it says in verse six and seven, for exaltation comes neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south, but God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. One of the first things that we understand is that no matter who you are, guess what? You're only where you are because God allowed you to be there. Um, Herod the king forgot these things. When you look in Acts chapter 12, beginning at verse 1, it says, now Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain or to harass certain people of the church. And, and he started, you know, harassing different people. He started harassing James, and then he ended up killing James right? And then when he saw that it pleased the people, he said, you know what? I'm going to take Peter too. I'm going to take Peter too. But it was the time of Passover. And so he didn't want to uh, kill Peter during Passover because it might excite a riot. So he said, I'm going to hold Peter until Peter, uh, until after Passover, and then I'm going to bring him out and destroy him, right? But then what happened is that we find that the angel of the Lord in the middle of the night came and delivered Peter from prison, delivered him from chains, delivered him from the guards that were holding him, and, and brought him out to the people of God. And and what's what's so funny is that at that point, Herod the king, when you get to this point, you see that Herod the king is doing a speech before people. 
and the people in the in the midst of them trying to uh, gain friendship with Herod or to gain uh, provisions from Herod, they, they started to exalt him and said that this is the voice of a God and not of a man. And, and Herod, because he didn't immediately give God glory, it reminds me of when the disciples, many times when they performed miracles, um, that the people would lift up, the people would lift up the disciples and say, wow, these guys are anointed. And the disciples would tear their clothing and say, no, we are men just like you. We are not anything. In fact, you know, when people were healed with the man at the gate called beautiful, you know, Peter even told him, he says, do you think that we've done this of our own power? You know, but, but today what we see more often than not is that we see folks who are taking the glory. We see folks that are taking the praise, you know, from from the 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 when folks give their bios to 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 all the way down to when when folks talk about what they have done and what they have accomplished, you know, they're so uh, uh, robust and so uh, um, boastful about the things that they have done and that they have accomplished, as if you did it. And and even if they give God a little slight glory, it they really want the praise. They really want you to applaud them. They want you to laud them. But if you look in Romans chapter uh, 12, Romans chapter 12 and verse three, look at what it says. It says, for I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. It is important to know that if it were not for God, where would you be? You know, we say this, but oftentimes we say this as a cliche, that if it, if it was not for the grace and mercy of God, where I don't know where I would be. No, I'll tell you where you would be. You would be dead and gone. You would be, you would be destroyed. For the Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So because of that, if it was not for the hand of God over your life, you would have lost it long time ago. Look at people around you. Look at the news. Look at what's in the newspaper or on the internet. There are many individuals who have gone through half of the things that you've experienced, and they've taken their lives. They, they uh, um uh, taken other people's lives. They have um, harmed other people. They've harmed themselves. But here you are still with a praise, still with a prayer. Do you think that's because you were any better than them? No, it is because of the grace and mercy of God. Look at what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and let me turn there real quick. When you get to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and you look at verse 7, look at what it says. For who makes you differ from another? And what do you have that you did not receive? Now, if you indeed, if you did indeed receive it, why do you boast as if you have not received it? In other words, why do you act like, oh, I have this special wisdom? No, you don't have anything. God gave it to you. The Bible says in James chapter one and verse five, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it freely. So just because you can teach a sermon or teach a class, just because you can dot every syntax and, 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 and every grammatical thing and you can put it in order, just because you can write, just because you can compose, just because you can teach, just because you can play, just because you can do whatever you do, guess what? You can do those things because it was given to you. And everything that was given to you was given for the Lord's purpose. Psalms chapter 115 and verse 1 says, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory because of your mercy, because of your truth, right? So we have to be careful um, um, on the stage that we've been given. We have to be careful for what God has given us. Don't boast about it. 
Don't don't be arrogant about it. Don't be arrogant that you have what you have and that you accomplished what you accomplished because there are many people that have accomplished um, more than you that that God has given less access to, that God has, has given less prominence to. And where you are, you are because the Lord has a plan for your life. Look what Lamentations says, Lamentations chapter three and verse 22. It says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Listen, it is important to know that everything we have, we have for the Lord. We, we have for his purposes. The Bible says everything was created by him. It was created for him and it was created through him. Everything belongs to him. We are here. The Bible says we are a vapor of air that appears for a moment and then disappears, right? And so because of that, says we know that the, the brevity of life, you know, David says in Psalms chapter 90, teach us to number our days so that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. So what is that telling us? That's telling us that I am where I am because God chose me to be here. I don't care if you're in the lion's den this morning. God chose you to be there. I don't care if you're in the fiery furnace this morning. God chose you to be there. I don't care if you're frustrated or aggravated, or maybe you're in love, or maybe you're married or about to get married, or where, wherever you are, God chose you to be there, and you have to be careful how you behave on that stage. You have to be careful on how you act on that stage. Don't get frustrated. Don't get aggravated. Don't let your mouth start spewing out uh, uh, frustration. Like, like, for example, when you look at the story of Job, in the beginning, Job was perfect and upright before God. But then when his friends, who was his close confidence, when they got on his nerve and started accusing him of things falsely, you know, Job started running off at the mouth. He started running off the mouth and fussing in his situation, complaining about his situation. There's some of you that may be watching or listening to me this morning that maybe the Lord has you right now as a single person. And instead of giving yourself completely to the Lord and devoting yourself to him, what are you doing? You're fussing about your singleness. You're complaining about your singleness. And 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 it is that do that complaint that God said to, to Job, who is this that talks without knowledge? Who is this that speaks without understanding that God has a way, my God, that's past finding out. He has a way that goes beyond what you think and what you act. He says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Yeah, you might say, well, God, a year has been long enough. Lord, Lord, five years has been long enough. Lord, 10 years has been long enough. Lord, it's been 12 years it's been long enough, but God knows. He knows the length of your days and he knows what he has planned for you. He knows. He says, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you, thoughts of peace and not of evil to bless you and to give you an expected end. But you got to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding. But in all your ways, you got to acknowledge him. You acknowledge that he's God. He's God in this. Lord, I may not like this, but you're still God. Lord, this may not feel good, but you're still God. Lord, I, this may not be the path that I've chosen, but you're still God. This may not be the, the situation that I want. It may not be perfect like I want it to be, but guess what? God, it is. you're still in control because you rule and you reign supreme. That's why Hebrews says he who comes to God must first believe that he is God. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So I'm telling you this morning, be careful on the stage that you've been given. When you look in Ecclesiastes, and I'm going to turn there really quickly before I let you go. Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name, Father. When you look in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, chapter 11. Thank you, Lord God. We bless your name, Father. Ecclesiastes, chapter 11. And, and when you look at verse five, look at what it says. It says, as you do not know what is the way of the wind, 
or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child. So you do not know the works of God who makes everything. <laughs> and the scripture says, God makes everything beautiful in his own time. He makes everything beautiful in his own time. And that's why where you are, you have to be careful. <laughs> right where you are. I know that there's been some things that you've been praying about for a long time, but right where you are, you have to be careful. The Bible says, don't allow your lips to cause your, don't allow your lips to cause your flesh to sin. Don't allow your lips to speak things. You know, I've heard people many times, you know, maybe you, you're going through things and maybe in your body, you're going through things. You say, oh God, I wish that you would, you know, stop this, or oh God, I wish that you would take this away, or oh God, I just can't no more. So what's the other option? Would you rather die? You know, sometimes we don't want to experience pain, but what if you couldn't feel pain at all? What if you were paralyzed? Would that be better? We have to be careful of the stage we're on. Herod was not careful of his stage. He was given a stage. He was given an opportunity. And he could have, even when the people gave him praise, he could have given that praise to God and said, no, it's not me. It's not me that sounds this good. It's not me that's doing what I'm doing. But it's because of God. The scripture says, in him, we live, we move, and we have our being. So I want to encourage you today be careful on the stage that you've been given the lord is good and his mercy endures to all generations so god bless you have a blessed and marvelous day in jesus name god bless you